G'day legends, g'day superstars, it's Peps and I'm bringing you the round 19 tips for a massive week of AFL footy. How tight is it at the top of the ladder? Plenty of room at the bottom of the ladder, but there will be no room inside the Marvel Stadium tonight when the Essendon Bombers take on the Adelaide Crows Friday, July 19. 7.40 p.m. It is going to be an absolute cracker. The axe has been swung everywhere. Can Essendon get that win that they need to push themselves into the top four and potentially and hopefully stop their slide out of the eight? The Adelaide Crows have been woeful recently. Will they be able to change their trend? Well, I don't think it's going to happen for the simple fact. No Walker, no Adelaide Oval, no Adelaide Crows. Essendon should this win win this one. They were pretty poor against the D's last week, and I expect them to bounce back for simply one main reason. They've got a roof over themselves. When they've got a roof, they play good footy. When it's outdoors and raining, they are atrocious. But they'll be far from atrocious this week against the Adelaide Crows. They will win this one in a canter. I'm tipping a minimum of four goals, and I reckon Zach Merritt... I'm putting a long bow out here. We'll have an absolute blinder again because he is the best captain outside of my man, Maxi Gorn, in the league in 2024. Rightio, let's rock over to one of the games of the weekend. You know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Geelong versus the Western Bulldog GMHBA Stadium, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night. And talk about two massive ins. Trelaw and Norton, they are going to be huge. This is going to be a game I seriously have got no idea who is going to win. Do you go with the all-conquering Western Bulldogs forward line to cause an upset with the Bond, with the Norts, with Darcy, with Eugle Hagen, with Trelaw, with McRae? We've got Rory Lobb down back against the Geelong Cats who can never do anything wrong down there at GMHBA Stadium. I'm simply going to go with the Cats for the reason it's a GMHBA stadium. If this was flipped and it was at Marvel, there is no doubt in my mind the Western Bulldogs will take this one. But I just know the narrow dimensions, you have to play that game completely different. And the Geelong forward line, without um, Mr. Hawkins down there, has had a little bit of a resurgence. It's been sensational. Got Manor being in there. Jeremy Cameron's just firing a little bit more. You've got that really minimal small forward line of Stengel, Close, and Myers. It's a cracker across the board. And I'm just going to go by less than a goal. This is going to be so tight, it won't be funny. And I'm talking about the uh, Geelong Cats to take that one over the doggies to cement a top four spot, which I never thought was going to happen. And to also give the Western Bulldogs just a little more pain points about making finals in 2024. Right here, let's go to another cracker dacker of a game. GWS versus the Gold Coast Suns at NG Stadium, 145 in the afternoon. Oh, geez, where is this one going to go? I've got no idea. The Giants have been pretty, pretty average, I'd have to say, over the last month. They've had some good wins and they've had a couple of bad losses as well too. And the GWS, well, uh, sorry, the Gold Coast, when they're away, they're putrid. And when they're home, they're awesome. Where's this game being played? It's being played away. And that means I have to go with the GWS Giants in by less than two goals. I love what Jesse Hogan is doing. Uh, he has been magnificent. And Jack Backley down back without Sam Taylor being in there has been really cool as well too. But I'm looking to these two midfields having an absolute belter schmelter against each other. When you're Callum Ward, Tom Green, Isaac Cumming versus Anderson, Raul, uh, Holman, Closey in there as well too. I just cannot wait. Jesse Hogan versus Ben King, Lacocious versus Darcy Jones. I mean, Ben Long versus Toby, uh, Toby Green. It's all going to be happening. Ned Maul versus Kieran Briggs, two of the ugliest rugmen running around, but I would love to have both of them on my team. GWS by less than two goals, but this is going to be a cracker dacker of a game. It just continues at 4.35 p.m. Used to be the graveyard slot. Now this is the one where every game is alive. Hawthorne versus Collingwood. Who do you go with here? Well, J J uh, Daniel McStay is back. Jeremy Howe is back. Finn McGuinness, Jack Ginevan is in. I'm going out on a limb here, and I never thought I'd say this half a season ago. Hawthorne will beat Collingwood. This is the game that'll get Hawthorne into the top eight. They are playing great footy. How good were they against Fremantle last week? And Collingwood, they've just been up and down like an old person's EKG um, heart monitor. Uh, towards the back end of their life. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. But I think that we'll be hearing the beep this weekend for Collingwood's finals chances. Hawthorne, you are going to win this one. 
Uh, it's just the belief that you've been showing, the great footy that you've been showing. And it's interesting with um, Sicily, he is just uh, flipped himself around. I don't think he'll play back because of what happened last week. Will they play him up forward? I'm really interested to see what happens with that one there. Hasn't been named as an out just at the moment, but we'll see what happens. If he's out, I'm going to flip it. But if he's in, they will definitely win this one under two goals as well. Rightio, Adelaide Oval, 7.30 p.m., Port Adelaide, Richmond. This is one of an easy game that I'm going to pick. When you've got Radisava Galea coming in, you've got Georgiades coming in, Willie Rioli, that is too much of a handle for Richmond to beat. It's at home. Port Adelaide will win this one. Six to seven goals, I think. They've been um, pretty average over the last number of weeks. They were pretty bad against Gold Coast last week. They will be ruining the opportunity to not lock in the top four. This is the game that they have to win. Richmond, they're just struggling at the moment. They've been a little bit better, but I don't think that they're going to have the capabilities to run over Port Adelaide. Not at home. And Jason Hord francis I think will uh, slap, including myself, the critics on the butt and have an absolute blinder as well too. So they will win by a minimum five to six goals. That's the way that I see it. Rightio, another game that's kicking on the, as well will be St Kilda versus the Wet Toast Eagles. West Coast away, no good, but they were really good, actually, funny enough, last week against a very challenging Brisbane, a complete turnaround in the way that they played. Can they bring that two weeks in a row, or will the honeymoon be period be over for their new coach? I think St. Kilda should take this one at home. Brad Hill playing his 250th game. Liam Stock is still going to be there. Hugh Garcia coming in. Lots of changes. But when you lose Waterman, when you lose Yao, and when you lose Duggan and Brockman, too much of a, a gap for them to be able to cover. St. Kilda at Marvel, they are a completely different beast. Very similar to how Essendon play. They will be too good. And I reckon, we haven't seen it for a while, but I'm almost going to say that Rowan Marshall will spend a lot more time down forward and kick a minimum of three and snags Higgins to have a minimum of four and have an absolute blinder because he is one of my favorites. Rightio, let's, if you think it was Super Saturday, wait for Sensational Sunday. We are talking about Brisbane. We are talking about the Sydney Swans battling it out at the jab of the hut, 1.10 p.m., where does this one go? You've got Brisbane, who uh, they're really, really coming hard in the back end of this season, and Sydney, the most consistent team throughout the season so far. No McInerney, no Mills, no Rowbottom. Would you be worried? Well, when they're bringing in Starshevic, Robinson, and Smith at this stage for his debut game, good luck to you, young man, and Harry Cunningham playing his 200th. I would just have to go with the home team on this one. This is the last chance I'm giving Brisbane. If Brisbane cannot beat Sydney at home, they've got no chance of getting anywhere in the finals because this is the litmus test. This is the one that they have to beat. This is the uh, Grand Poubert. It is the uh, top of the Eiffel Tower with the Paris Olympics 2024 coming along. And if you can't beat Sydney on your home deck, you've got no chance of beating them anywhere. So I'm going Brisbane by less than three goals over Sydney. But if Sydney win this one, lock them in for a grand final spot. If they beat uh, Brisbane up there, they'll beat anyone anywhere. All right, let's roll on to Carlton versus North Melbourne. Now, once again, about five weeks ago, I would have said that Carlton will canter this one in. But how North Melbourne have been playing over the last number of weeks has been really, really good. I would have said this would be Hunji at the start of the year. I don't think it's going to be that bad. They've still got issues down back, but their midfield and their forward line has been working so much better. And I think that this will be a tightness uh, type of game in the middle. I reckon they'll be able to negate or actually have a uh, run over Carlton's midfield. But I just think when you've got Kurnow and Mackay and you've got a back line for North who just aren't there at the moment, that's where I can see them getting a stranglehold. So... If North's midfield and forwards can lock it in and hold the ball going up the other end of the ground, I do think Carlton are a little bit susceptible in the back end of their um, ground. But once it gets up forward, they're going to be too hard to stop. I'm going by about six or seven goals for this one, but I can probably see it being tight for a good portion of the game and then Carlton blowing it open in the back end, which has happened to North Melbourne a couple of times this year. But I really like the way that they're, they're going, and I think they're setting themselves up nice. If they can pick a couple in the back end through trades, 
and through drafting to solidify their back end of their uh, crew, they're going to be looking really nicely uh, set up for a few years and better than some of the other teams who are down there with them. But Carlton, five or six goals. And oh, I would say, been a bit quiet recently, but Elijah Hollands, he will have an absolute corker. And I'd love to see, um, from a North Melbourne perspective, just that gorgeous man, Nick Larkey, have an absolute blinder against Weedering as well too. Rightio, how about this game? If you thought it was getting over, if you thought the weekend it was over, you're wrong because Fremantle versus Melbourne, wah, wah, we wah. No, um, Max Gorn again. So what is Melbourne going to do from a ruck perspective? They've brought in uh, they've brought in Fullerton and they've brought in Tomlinson. Now I'm looking at it going, well, I think that they're going to bring one of those guys in. You don't take big name two big guys unless you're going to have one of those be the ruck, and I'm going with Fullerton. But when you've got Darcy and Jackson up against uh, a non-formidable ruck combination in Van Royen and Petty, I think that they'll take the biscuits there. But when you've got a midfield that is firing, Melbourne's forward, uh, midfield really been picking up. Trent Rivers being one of the best five players in the game over the last number of weeks has been flying in that midfield, supported by Pickett, supported by Viney, supported by Oliver, getting a bit more run in the legs, Sparrow, against Fife, Young, Brayshaw is uh, Sarong. It is going to be an absolute corker. You're going to have Alex Pierce who's back against Van Royen. Uh, you're going to have Stephen May up against Jaya Miss or Josh Tracy. There's just so much awesomeness. I'm just going to go with Fremantle because it is at home. But if Melbourne can show what they did against last uh, incident last week, bring the pressure, bring the pump, bring the hate, they could be a chance to pinch this one. I think Frio... I don't think they've, they've lost one at home for quite a while from my recollection. And I reckon they could be due. I am going with, this is a fitty fitty. I'm going by Fremantle by less than two goals. But I'd love to see my boys uh, get this one, get the win and really solidify their spot in the top eight. Ladies and gentlemen, there are your games for a massive round of AFL football brought to you by me, Peps from Lace Out, bringing you tipped out. Hey, I know you love this content and I love this as a community. So make sure if you haven't, like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your mum, tell your auntie, tell your cousins, tell everybody because this is the best AFL podcast channel this side of the Westgate Bridge here in Melbourne and the best side of town and where you live in your state or country if you're watching this outside. Hey, we love you. Subscribe. See me and J-Dog this Monday night, 8 p.m. It's Lace Out. It's how you want your footy. And I want you joining me every single week. Thank you, viewers. I hope your team wins, unless you're Fremantle.